Great. Hello, everybody. I am Callum. I'm a product manager here at Arturia. And I'm very excited to present to you the latest instrument in the augmented instruments, which is the augmented brass. Alongside with the augmented brass, and there's like an intro offer for the first three weeks, we've also done a lot of work on the other three instruments that are in the series, which is augmented grand piano, augmented voices, and augmented strings. And we've created some really nice expansion packs. So the idea of this live stream is to talk you through the latest instrument, go through some presets, talk about the play page, then we'll go into the advanced section, check out the engine, check out the articulations or the sampled content. And then we'll move into the expansion packs, again, play through some presets. And then at the end, because now we have four instruments, which is very exciting, I've made a few tiny little ideas and compositions using all four of them, which is really fun. So augmented brass, um, like I said, very excited and keen to show you what it sounds like and to talk you through some new features that we've added. So I guess I should maybe shut up, <laughs> play a few presets, and then we'll go through the live stream. Very nice, big orchestral sounds. Let's just go through two more presets, and then we'll start talking about the play page. I just want to show you some of, yeah, some of the presets and the sort of variety of presets. So that was quite, both of them were quite uh, orchestral sustained sounds. This next one I really enjoy playing because it's, when you first play it sounds like a, like a little piano, but then the brass comes in afterwards. So you can almost have, it's like you're playing with someone. Like call and response. fast and slow. You can hear the nice flutter tongues coming through. Let's play the staccato one and then I'll talk you through the through the play page and then we'll go into the engine. Thank you. 
Very nice. Um, I hope that gives you sort of a... We'll keep playing through the presets, but I hope that gives you sort of a nice impression of the really high quality brass samples that we have in here and the mix of synthesis. So going back to Wide and Pride, Wide and Proud, sorry, because this uh, shows off the macros very nicely. But I think first of all, let's just talk about the concept of augmented brass. The whole idea sort of spawned from this morph knob and the two layers. So you have layer A and layer B, and you have this morph knob that, you know, like augments the sound from a classical sound into something slightly more unworldly or pushing the brass into like a sort of new territory was the idea and the brainchild behind the augmented series to do it for pianos, for voices, for strings and for various other instruments in the future. So typically the concept is that layer A would have a more acoustic natural sound and layer B would have a more synthetic otherworldly sound. I feel like this preset shows it off nicely. So let's just play a nice chord. So you can see it's just like nice real brass with some reverb. Layer B. is a strange textural, nice synthetic sound. But then as you can play, play chords, you can express yourself through the morph knob. So lots of fun and loads of sweet spots from the layer A to the layer B to like anywhere in between you can really start finding unusual sounds wherever you want to venture with the morph knob. Surrounding the morph knob we have several, several uh, macros. So the top three are the sound macros and the bottom four are effects. So let's simply go through all the macros. Let me just reset to the, in, to the, the, re, the preset. So color is the color of the sound. I just like to think of it as dark or bright. So color all the way to the top. So all the way down, it's very dark and, oh, and that's sort of subdue. So as you can hear there, sound designer is opening up the cutoff filter to make it brighter, but there's some added, added textures that are adding, I guess, through the synth engine. Maybe they're turning up the volume of the synth engine or something like that to give it a bit more of a brighter tone. And then we have the time macro. So this just controls yeah, the time of the shape of the uh, sound. So typically, I would say when time is low, you get a short sound. <laughs> And then when you increase time, I feel like here the attack and the release. Can't play it fast anymore, but. So you just dial in your sweet spot. Motion can add several different things from vibrato to tremolo. Sometimes it increases the LFO speed or the arpeggiated speed. Here I believe it's just a simple tremolo. But it's nice, it's adding nice pumping. Quite synthetic sound, but it's nice. And then for each layer, we have an effects chain. 
So there's a couple of effects for layer B, a couple of effects for layer, layer A, sorry. So it could be simply like some chorus or some distortion, um, some delay. So let's have a little listen. For layer B, some nice distortion. Then at the end of the chain, we have a delay and a reverb. So that gives you a quick overview of the play page. From my, my perspective, I see it as I kind of like go through the presets, feel inspired, tweak the macros, and you can quite easily just find presets, sounds within the presets. I often go through them, just sometimes change the morph and the color, maybe add a little bit of reverb, and I save that as like a new preset. It sounds more like my kind of sound. And I feel like you can really discover your own sound palette within the presets that we were offering. So maybe we could just go through a few more presets, and then we could go to the advanced panel. I've made a little playlist for you. I will talk about it a bit later on, but we've added a new engine. It's called Simpler. And it's just like quite a simple um, sample engine. Plays back samples, loops them, plays them in reverse. But we've added some really great, I think there's about 80 to 100 um, presets, uh, sample presets in there. And it really adds to, uh, to some textures, some otherworldly sounds. Maybe it's like a thunderstorm or uh, a door slamming, um, electricity. I'll, we'll go through them, you can hear them later, but it can like add some really great uh, textures and cinematic sounds to the presets. Like that. feel like I'm writing a, a trailer, <laughs> which was the other one I wanted to show you. Soundtrack, some classic brahm sounds. Zimmer style, big brass, <laughs> it's really great. Great. So now we're in the advanced page. You have the two sort of the play page and the advanced page. The advanced page is the the under the hood, it's the sound engine of the augmented, and for all augmented instruments, they are the same. So you have a layer page, as I said, layer A and layer B. These, are can, these have two parts per layer, so it's like four layered multi timbral instrument. Each part has an ADSR, and each layer goes through a filter, and the filter has its own envelope. We'll go through this in more detail. And then we have modulation, a couple of LFOs, functions, random, and then like velocity after touch. And to hook this up, maybe we could go Yeah, maybe I could just show you quickly how simple it is to change 
your sound just using modulation. So like LFO, when we record the orchestra, we have far and close mics. So close mics up to the horn of the trumpet or tuba, and then the far mics further out inside the room. the subtlety, the slight sort of subtlety of the room changing as I'm playing. And then we could put LFOs on. Maybe we'll put a function. Let's put a function on the filter cutoff. Make it go faster. So very simply, you can start crafting your sound, putting a few modulations on things, and start sound designing, if that's what interests you. It's really easy and intuitive, I find. We've also added a really nice addition, which I don't know if you've used the, uh, the pigment synthesizer that we bring out. We have this cross function, so I can literally just move up and down particular settings of the function, uh, of the modulation, onto Resonance, I don't know if this is going to sound. <laughs> Doesn't sound great, but you get the idea. And then we have a, a nice arpeggiator. Let me just choose a staccato sound. Make it a bit slower. Make it a bit shorter. Really nice, um, really easy to use. This uh, random to the velocity and the, and the gate. Yeah, really adds a sort of a personality and a human touch to the arpeggiator. So it's really fun to mess around there. Then, as I said in the intro, we have um, effects inserts per layer. So we have compressors, distortion, bit crushes per layer. And then we have effects like a digital and a reverb at the, at the end. So if it's your cup of tea to sound design, you can really go in and craft some great sounds. But we've given the Augmented Brass to 10 sound designers, and they've crafted us thir uh, 300 presets that are in the factory. And they yeah, have really diverse and interesting cinematic, predominantly cinematic sounds, I would say, in there. We did ask for some like more poppy and urban sounds. So I'd say like in Analog Lab or other software that houses all of Arturia's software. Um, yeah, there's sort of more diversity that can be added to Analog Lab. Here there is the diversity, but I'd say mainly it's more driven towards the cinematic sound. So I feel like it's a good opportunity to go through the orchestral samples, because this is what makes this product so unique and interesting and great sounding. Okay. So we recorded um, an orchestra brass, orchestral brass. I believe it was two tubers, four trombone, four trumpet, and four horn. And let's have a little listen through. So 
but these are the more sort of classic articulations that you would typically find in a brass library. Mm -mm. <laughs> Reminds me of James Bond. Um, and then we have some really interesting, similar to what we had for the strings, it's like this random allowing the players to create textures within uh, their playing style in the orchestra. So this is like a random flutter tongue. Mm, sounds great. I remember earlier I was talking about the mix. This is a good chance to show, yeah, the room mic and the close mic. So you can hear the difference there. I really like this one. Sounds great. So I guess this is a good time to talk about some of the new features, and then I'll go back into the samples. Um, we've added this core. Well, we've added this keyboard tuning because some people were, I don't know, they were requesting a feature because if beforehand we had course, and when I'd lower um, lower the course, it would actually like um, change. It would affect the sample and reduce the playback speed of the sample, which gives a nice effect. But when you go really low or really high, it sort of um, destroys the content a little bit, I would say. So you've added this keyboard offset. And this allows to shift where the articulation is on your keyboard. So I'll just play C. So this is nice for like a potential like key split, or if you want to your tubers and your trumpets up here, for example. But what also is nice is that we now have um, the same content, but we can harmonize it without affecting the sound of the original sample. So let's just have this. So I'm only playing one note, but I have the two, the two sounds. So that's really fun and uh, yeah, much requested feature. We've also, I don't know if you are aware of the augmented grand piano, but you had natural and synthetic releases in the artic articulation pool. We've moved that feature onto um, the release of the ADSR just for ease of use and it's a bit more clearer how to control the release here. So natural release, when I'm in a big room and we have our trumpet players, whatever, they play the note and they finish the note and it's like the it's the sound of the room and we capture that. So we can have this natural release, which is capturing the sound of the room, or we can have synthetic, which is kind of like a fade out, which, yeah, as I said, it sounds synthetic. So we could have a quick listen. Let's just choose a normal. So this is synthetic. It sounds nice, but as you can hear, it's, it's... 
we start natural and then we quickly move <laughs> into a, into something that a, a human can't really play. But it's a nice effect and then we have the natural sound. Might be a bit more obvious on the loud. If you can hear the nice room that it was recorded in. So that's the orchestral. And then for trump, uh, for, we've also added a uh, chamber brass. So these are just uh, the three players, so like three horn, uh, three trumpets on their own, three horns, three trombones, and one tuba. We also paired them up and had horns and trumpet and horns and trombone. But it's nice because it gives you a very a, a variation and maybe like a more intimate sound rather than the big orchestral sound. So we can have a quick listen through. <laughs> So I said we have trombone, trumpet, some nice muted trumpet. And then we have the combination, so there's tuba and trumpet, horn and trumpet, and trombone and trumpet. So if you want a, yeah, potentially a bigger sound, but not quite that orchestral sound. Really high quality sounds. Really have a lot of fun just going through them and just playing the them essentially as like a library. And then typically for all the augmented instruments, we add a process brass and additional samples. The process brass is the chamber, all orchestral. Just some articulations are chosen, and then we run them through, <coughs> run them through some hardware. Sometimes going through some nice software plugins. And then for the additional samples, these are complementary samples, multi samples playing across the whole keys to the chamber, orchestral, and process brass that we can't really can't really achieve those sounds with the synth engines. So just some Some really nice sort of synthy brass tones. So just even one layer, two parts, you can get some really great sounds. So I really recommend yeah, venturing into the advanced panels and seeing what content we have on offer for the augmented instruments. 
And then we have the synth engines, virtual analog, granular, harmonic, wavetable. And for each instru augmented instrument, we ask sound designers to craft engine presets. So you can flip through them like that for the analog, the granular, flip through them. But each one is crafted for that particular instrument and is going to complement the sampled content. So again, it's really fun. You could just load up a preset and then flick through a couple of these synth engine presets and find brand new sounds. And it's really uh, inspiring and easy to use, which is always a good thing. So let's just have a quick listen to some of the synth engines. <laughs> some noise in there as well. There's one I really, I think it's this one. Nice lo-fi. Some great granular presets. Some quite extreme ones, but these are great to add a little bit of. I don't know, you have a typical horn sound and then adding these like just textures to intrigue the ear, but it doesn't have to be loud in the mix or anything. There was some, yeah, maybe these would be. So these are the real content just going through the granular engine. Sound fantastic. And then I wanted to show you the new engine that we've added to uh, the augmented. So all instruments we've updated, well, we've brought out augmented brass. But we've updated all three instruments to have all these extra features. So if you own strings, voices, or grand piano, open up the Arturia Software Center, update your product, your instrument, and you'll get this new engine with loads of new content, plus these extra features that I'm slowly going through and showing you. So as I said a bit earlier, um, this is just like a simple sampler, play back some samples, can loop them, uh, a little bit of FM modulation if you like that. But there's some really great content in here. And it's, yeah, it's just to sort of push what the augmented instrument can be and kind of pushing it a little bit more towards that sort of cinematic sound. So we have drones. So these can just be great. Underneath some brass, giving character to the brass. There's some field recordings. We could just listen to birds and make some presets with some birds and rain. Got some nice impacts. Some noises, some pads, some sound effects. So using these in creative ways can really add some great textures and, like I said, like intrigue the, the listener into what is that sound and why is that sound so unusual and there's some really great content to be exploited here. And the feature set, as I said, is just very, let's maybe go to a more normal sound. <laughs> They're all quiet. It's more for texture than playable. Here we go. Some more normal stuff. So you can turn the loop on and off. You can change the play position. We can play it backwards. You can go back and forth.
So yeah, you can go in there um, and just add a lot of characters to the sounds. For the expansion packs, we gave the sound designers these features for the expansion packs. So I'll play through them in a little bit. You can really hear some really great presets using these. Yeah, these new uh, new content. Great. Um, so all I was going to show you was. Now we've split the um, panning on the parts. So before it was just the layer panned, but now each part has its own panning. So if we put some delay, turn that off. That was me just turning the link off. Oh, sorry, my mouse isn't dragging. So within the one layer, we can add a lot of stereo movement. Same with the layer B. So you can have, you can just position them and have layer, 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 layer. Or you can have them moving around your head. And yeah, it's a really nice um, usable feature that I think adds a lot to the sound, to the stereo width of the sound. And then for the vibrato and the tremolo, we've added um, each part can have its own vibrato and tremolo now. So again, each part is now even more individual and can do even more on its own, which in the grand scheme of things really adds to the whole preset sound design. So I feel like that's covered the instrument very well. I see that I've talked to me. <laughs> I kind of got on a bit, but just very excited to show you. And then we'll talk about the other instruments. Maybe we could just go through a few more presets and then we'll talk about the other instruments. So I hope that gives you a nice overview of brass. It's orchestral, big cinematic sounds as well as it's more intimate sounds. I feel like you can really get some really great uh, cinematic and sort of game media sort of sounds in there. So I'm very excited to also talk to you about uh, the expansion packs because we've spent a lot of time coming up with the ideas and a lot of time on the sound design, the sound design at Arturia, working really hard to craft this really, these really great expansion packs. Let me just make the screen a little bigger, the instrument a little bigger, sorry. 
So what is an expansion pack? We have 50 new engine presets. We have five new multi-samples in the sample engine and 64 presets. And the three of them together are called the cinematic trio. And each instrument has its own sort of take and flavor on cinema. So for pianos, it's called damaged pianos. And it's like leaving a piano outside to rot <laughs> and dishevel. And it's all sort of like out of tune and a little bit weird, but really fun to play. Really like the bank. Voices is futuristic voices. Um, again, sort of like ethereal, otherworldly voices, um, alien voices was kind of the, the brief. And we have suspense strings. And these are like horror, suspenseful strings, quite dark, like scratchy, sounding really, really nice. So just thought I would, I see the times coming on a bit. So maybe I'll just play you some presets of what grand pi augmented grand piano, augmented voices, augmented strings sounds like the factory. And then we can talk about expansion packs. So these are sort of the typical sounds of the factory of uh, augmented grand piano. So these are some typical sounds on the uh, augmented grand piano. Really interesting textures and sort of classic sounds. There's a whole live stream that I did back in November, I think, October, one of those months. And yeah, another in-depth look into that. But I wanted to show you today the, the damaged piano sounds. wonky, really textural, cinematic sounds. I'm a pianist by heart and uh, I just, I could go on about, but I know this is an augmented brass live stream, so I shouldn't, but. really high quality presets and content. I was going to go through the content, but I think we've run out of time. So I'm just going to go through each pack, as I said. So augmented strings, we've updated the, uh, the background on strings to give it a bit more color and a bit more identity. Some typical presets from the factory.
Is that right? Am I playing only this? Sounds good. Maybe we should listen. Look at the... The interface. So, yeah, these are sort of typical sounds of the augmented strings are, again, big orchestral strings, but also some intimate um, violins, violas, and cellos. But suspense strings are a little expansion pack about kind of like horror, suspenseful, thriller kind of genres of cinematic. quite dark and interesting textures. I mean, these are only like three of the presets, but so, so much character, I can just hear it in <laughs> some strange uh, Net Netflix documentary or Stranger Things. But there are some nice playable um, presets within suspense strings. Gives you a nice idea of um, the sounds you can get, you can imagine in the expansion pack. Not least, last but not least, augmented voices. Again, we've updated the background to make it a little bit more, have a bit more personality, a bit more individual. Quickly, some. Oh! Need to stop doing that. Up there. Here's some typical presets of augmented voices. This is probably the most sort of synthetic out of out of the instruments. But it's a really nice blend, really like nice if you like that character of voice, really great uh female and male voices with that additional of um synths, you get this really sort of in general it's already quite ethereal sounding. But then we've um yeah, we've gone for this futuristic voices, like I said, again like ethereal, quite outworldly, um Otherworldly alien voices was the brief.
mean, that's not very ethereal, but it sounds pretty epic. And you can hear quite easily the, the simpler, pre, uh, simpler engine having an effect on the content. So yeah, I could, I would quite like to go through that a bit more, but I oh, but I think um, I think I've been talking quite a while, so maybe we shouldn't. But I really really recommend checking out the expansion packs. There's some really really great content there, and I'm really I'm really enjoying using them for like sort of yeah that sort of cinematic character. So finally, all I wanted to show was now that we have four instruments, like. We got to have some tracks using all four and like using, yeah, just the sort of different flavors of the presets. These are just presets that I found in the factory. And I just spent a few hours just putting a few phrases and ideas down. And they're quite, the aim was it to be kind of cinematic. So. Just make sure it's running. So this is just a typical. This is just a preset in uh, augmented brass. So you can hear all this great character and from it didn't take me long like 10 minutes and it's like really moody uh, dark soundtrack music So again, just using some presets, big, powerful marching sounds. I will just play one more because those two are quite dark, and then um, I'm going to take some questions. I just wanted to show off the more just acoustic nature of the augmented instruments.
Great, so I hope that gave you a nice insight into Augmented Brass, the new features we've added, the content that's in Augmented Brass, the presets, and to give you a nice overview of the expansion packs. Really happy and proud of the instruments that we've made at Arturia here. The series has been out one year, and yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, so please leave comments in, in the YouTube or reach out to us through our socials because I'd like to know, do you like these instruments? What instruments would you like next? How can we improve these instruments? Because you are our customers, you are musicians, and we want to make your lives as inspiring and as enjoyable as possible. So I'm going to answer some questions that I believe you've been asking in the live stream. And then it'll be the end. So I'm just going to open up the questions. OK. The first question. My question is, why is it not in the analog lab like the other ones? I believe it should be. Perhaps it wasn't there during launch, but I believe that was the idea. So I would say potentially write to support. And I feel like within the next few days, if it's not working within the analog lab, it should be. So just bear with us if you can't find it. Perhaps your analog lab is out of date. So maybe open up the Arturia Software Center and see if it needs an update. Perhaps your update will then uh, include augmented brass. Second question, what about augmented drums? Yes, I think that would be pretty epic. At the moment, I, I don't know, I don't particularly want to change the engine too much. I feel like there's some potential instruments that could use this engine, but I feel like drums we would really have to readdress the engine and have an amazing sequencer and I don't know, potentially some other engines, maybe like the physically physical modeling synth engine would be wicked or maybe some carpless strung for some plucky percussion. I know that's particularly for sort of string sound, but I think it's on the idea it's on the horizon and if everyone really wants one, I'll hundred percent put a lot of effort into making it a reality. But I feel like it's a, quite a big shift um, with what we have at the moment. But for sure, I would love big augmented orchestral drums. So let's see. Is there a way to always set to the voice still mode to rotate instead of reassign when loading a patch? I browse through complete control software and it always sets it back to reassign. OK, so we chose reassign at the beginning of the project for augmented strings and voices because we've seen that these uh, products, these instruments are um, quite CPU heavy. Um, and reassign allows us to reuse the voices that are already used so it uh, doesn't keep adding voices. But I have, I understand, I heard some people also ask for rotate. So perhaps we could think about a feature where you choose your default mode of voice, either rotate or reassign. The reason why it's reassign is for CPU concerns. So yeah, I can talk to the developers and perhaps we can put that feature into the next update. Why isn't this part of my analog labs like the other three are? OK, same question. I think either update Analog Lab or it's not integrated just yet, but we are definitely working on it. And I can imagine very soon that it will be part of Analog Lab. It should have been, so perhaps there was a, not a miscommunication, but perhaps there was something that maybe there was a bug or something that wasn't working correctly and we wouldn't want to put that in your hands and create any more frustration. When will the Archeria hardware like synths or midis available in Studio One 6? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps, so it's not working at the moment. I can talk to the team and see if 
what the issue is and like how what's preventing us. I'm not sure I totally understand. I, I sh it should work. So let me look into that and I can write into the YouTube. If you leave a comment on the YouTube, I'll try and get back to you directly and give you an answer. Is there an expressive multi-touching sensor keyboard available from Archeria? Multi-touch sensing. Perhaps you're talking MPE. Um, at, the, at the moment, there is no MPE um, controllers. Our software is MPE compatible. Perhaps in the future, we might be working on an MPE keyboard. I don't know. I can't say much. But at the moment, there isn't. So if you keep an eye out, potentially something will be coming in the future. Any way to add my own voices to voices? Unfortunately, at the moment, it is a, uh, a closed system. Um, and that was a decision that we made at the beginning because we, if we open up the system strings, you could add brass and brass, you could add strings, and it starts blurring the lines and but it is a request. It is a uh, quite a big request from users. So at the moment, it's not on the plans. But yeah, potentially we could start letting you add your own samples to the instruments. Okay, I'll definitely bear it in mind. Will there be an augmented woodwinds? I think it would really add to the series. It's not on the cards at the moment, but I feel. If, there, if enough of you are requesting it, I feel like it really would complement the brass and the strings and the piano and the voices, and it would really bring the orchestral sound together. So it's on. It's it's in the back of my mind, and perhaps it would be the next augmented instrument. I'd love to see a master augmented instrument to be able to combine all the available sources from the augmented instrument, more from strings to brass, etc. Yeah, I would love that too. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been thinking about it quite a lot recently. Now we've got all this great uh, content and these really fabulous instruments. It does make sense for the ev evolution to have a big augmented ensemble, I guess we could call it. Yeah, woodwinds, augmented ensemble, I feel are two pretty strong ideas and uh, I'd love to explore them in the future. So yeah, keep Keep a look out. I think we've done so much in one year of augmented instruments, so I feel like with this uh, proactiveness from Arturia and us, yeah, I see in the future, why not? We could definitely have some a big augmented ensemble and woodwinds. Cinematic Trio, Volume 2, in the making. <laughs> demo patches do not work, unfortunately. Ah, oh, that's demo patches. So, Volume 2 isn't in the making. It's interesting to see how well Volume 1 is received. And if people really like it and people really want it, I already have an idea for the next volume. So it's not in the making, but it's definitely a big idea of ours. Uh, yeah, I'd be really interested to see the love and support for the Volume 1. If there's enough, 100% we'll be making Volume 2. Perhaps it could be part of, uh, of the next V collection, or maybe when we bring out the next instrument, there could be another cinematic volume too. It's definitely food for thought. And the demo patch is not working. Maybe an analog lab? I'm not sure. Um, perhaps write into the YouTube comments or contact support, and I'll try and get back to you. It should be working, so. We'll see. What would an augmented bass device look like? Yeah, an augmented bass. I'd quite like to make an augmented guitar, which could be like bass guitar and acoustic and electric guitar. We have cello and double bass and augmented strings. We have tuba. So these are bass instruments, but through different instruments, <laughs> instruments uh, classes through the brass and the strings. I don't know if we're going to bass on its own 
make sense as a full instrument. But I think it could be combined if we did a guitar, it could definitely be some bass guitar. I think it'd sound great. Big bass guitar with some big sine waves would sound fantastic. Uh, so yes, yeah, some great ideas here. Really nice to hear them. What is the CPU usage when using multiple augmented tracks simultaneously? Yeah, as I said, I mean, the cinematic instruments, we have actually worked, I should have said this earlier in the live stream, so apologies to the dev team that I didn't, but we are working on optimizing as much as possible, and we really give the sound designers sort of a quite a strict brief to be creative, but like to not go crazy with the polyphony or go crazy with the granular engines. And these synth engines are the heavier part of the augmented instruments. Um, but they add a lot of sound and a lot of character, so it's this big, yeah, way up. Um, but yeah, I don't know, the CPU usage of aug simultaneous augmented tracks, it depends on what, it, what computer you're using. But for sure, when you go up, I don't know, five, six instances, it can start putting an impact on the CPU. But I have a friend who's got the latest uh, Mac 2, and he can run, I think he was running like 20. <laughs> so, and on my computer, I kind of, around six, it starts to struggle a bit. So, it depends on the computer. But we're, yeah, the next question is, is there a way to optimize the CPU? Currently, so we're working on it. It's a real goal of ours at Archeria to make uh, the CPU more and more efficient, to make our instruments more and more efficient. But it's a big um, balancing act of sound quality and CPU. Um, but we're really working on it, and we've improved it for this update. We'll keep improving it. I guess to reduce the CPU when using it, the polyphony, reduce the polyphony, try and not use, so, not use the granular or the harmonic engine so much. Uh, they're quite heavy. Um, and yeah, use the rotate voices. These are the things that I think quite quickly you can reduce the CPU. How to reduce latency and is there a guitar controller? Guitar controller on the way. How do you reduce latency? Um, that could be with your door. Um, so maybe to change the buffering size, that could help. But there, there shouldn't be any sort of latency within the actual plugin. I think that's probably more of a door, door side of things. And a guitar controller, um, I don't, Arturia has never really ventured into the guitar world. Guitar controllers maybe a little bit niche, I don't know. <laughs> you could get those like MIDI converters from the guitar. Um, but an augmented guitar could be quite cool. Maybe that'll be the first guitar thing that we do. And then I think this is the last question. Any chance of a non-augmented Arturia brass being re-released? An Arturia brass. Okay, so I, I'm not sure. So like a real brass library, I guess you're asking. Because what we wanted to do with the augmented stuff was to give you the brass presets of the real natural sounds, as well as the augmented stuff. I'd like tell the sound, sound designers like we have to achieve this like natural, kind of like classical library sound, and also do the augmented stuff. Um, but perhaps we've got the balance wrong. I don't know. Please leave a comment and let me know. I'd also love to, like, within the same question, do you want a huge sample library of 20 gigabytes? We wanted to keep it kind of small. I believe this is two or three gigabytes. And with the synth, the synth engine sort of give the edge to the, the size of the sample library. So. I don't know, an Arturia bra, I think this would be the solution for Arturia, but we could make some more presets that are much more leaning towards the natural sound, and potentially we could uh, increase the content, the sample size, and add more brass content to it. It's something that we're thinking about potentially at the moment, so 
yeah, leave some comments um, in the YouTube, and I'll try and get back to you. Um, Okay, so potentially this is a solution or a reason why the presets aren't working at Analog Lab. I think it's because the samples are so are, are too heavy, uh, as in like the downloadable content is too big, so we can't preview the presets. But if you go on the store, there's some really great preset um, audio clips, which just goes through each sort of, goes through like ten presets and a demo track. I think there's two demo tracks in this preset track, so yeah, I think that might be the issue then. I will work on it with the analog team. Maybe there's a solution that we can find. If not, go on to Archeria, go to the sounds section, and Cinematic Trio should be at the top. And you can hear some of the presets, some of the demos. And maybe that's enough to make you intrigued to buy it. So I think that's the end of all the questions. Augmented Brass was released last week. There's a three-week intro period, so there's some money off if you're an existing or a new customer. I hope this uh, and the cinematic sorry and the cinematic banks has also an intro offer, I believe. I hope this um, live stream was interesting for you, <laughs> and. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like the augmented instruments. Please leave some comments on YouTube or reach us out on socials. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to be improved. And thank you again for watching. I wish you a good afternoon and a good week. Thank you very much.